in the battle. trumpet hallelujah 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 can we hear you say it again hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Sound the trumpet, sound the alarm. fledging ministry, been in existence for four months, and ain't got no congregation. They got a theme song. Yes, we do. Amen. And know this, we have a congregation. It is global and international. This message is going to be podcast, uploaded on podcast via Spreaker.com, and we have people that are absolutely paying attention to what the Lord thus saith the Lord through Sound the Alarm Ministry, and this word will be going forth today on iHeartRadio, uh, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Amen. To all you that listen to Sound the Alarm Ministries, amen, we thank God for you, and we know that the Lord has yet promised that there is a harvest uh, for Sound the Alarm Ministries, and we about ready to go out fishing, y'all. Amen. We going out fishing. You cannot catch fish unless you go fishing. And the Bible said Jesus told his disciples that he wanted to make them fishers of men. So we going out into the uh, the highways, the hedges and the highways, and we going to compel folks to come to Christ, not just come to Sound the Alarm Ministries. They got to come to Jesus. Amen. Be brought to Jesus. And when they get brought to Jesus, then they get some simple, plain understanding about God and the word of God and get fully equipped so that they can be nurtured, uh, uh, grow and mature so they can go out and, and, and be disciples of others. That's the goal. That's the objective of any church. Amen. I'm just saying, let me get to the word. Um, Daniel, the sixth chapter. Uh, only going to talk about three verses, but we're going to talk about a lot, I believe, by way of the Holy Ghost. Daniel, the sixth chapter, starting at that first verse, and I absolutely will conclude at the third verse. Amen. And I'll be reading from the Bible of my preference, a translation of my preference, which is the Amplified Bible. And it reads this way. Uh, it pleased King Darius, successor to Belshazzar, to set over the kingdoms 120 satraps, who should be in charge throughout all the kingdoms. And over them three presidents of whom Daniel was one, that these satraps might give account to them, and that the king should have no loss or damage. Then this Daniel was distinguished above the presidents and satraps because of an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over all over the whole realm. You know what? There's a semicolon in there. Oh, that's a period. Oh, praise God, that's just my eyes playing tricks on me. Praise God, thus is the reading of God's word. And if you don't understand, I'm old, I'm a senior citizen. One day, if you're young, you'll get there. If not, grace and mercy. <laughs> thus is the reading of God's word. The word of the Lord is already blessed. May he continue to bless the hearing, reading, doing of his holy, blessed word. And as I'm mindful to say each and every time I do this, we don't want to just be hearers of the word. You need to be, we all need to become doers of it as well. Amen. Because the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. We need to have our steps ordered in God's word. Gracious and eternal Father, 
Lord God, I come to you right now just to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for yet another day that you saw me through. Father God, the song said, yes, just another day that you kept me. Just another day that you watched over and protected me. And I'm not taking that for granted because Lord knows uh, there were others that laid down around the time that I did and they did not wake up. Lord God, I, I, I have no complaints whatsoever. I might have had a little thing going on with illness or, or allergies or things of that nature. But Father God, you woke me up this morning. You started me on my way. I have full activities on my limb. And as far as I can tell, I am in my right mind. And for that, I say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for this day. Thank you for the worship that has already gone forward. Father God, from your various churches. Father God, and now that we're here at Sounding Alarm Ministries at this worship experience, Father God, I pray that as we go further into your word, Father God, we go further in what you would have us to do at this time. I know that, Arthur, I must decrease. And if I increase, you have to. If I decrease, Lord, help a brother out. If I decrease, then you have to increase. And therefore, I'm extremely mindful to say with, with sincere reverence in my mind and in my heart that let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in nobody's sight but your sight. My strength and redeemer, in the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray with thanksgiving in my heart. Amen, amen, amen. And for a thought, we're going to talk about, as the Lord and the Holy Ghost has led me to say, your character, your character will take you to a place where your talent never will or can. Amen. Your character will take you to a place. Where your character, where your, and your, oh Lord, help the brother out. Your character will take you to a place where your talent never will or can. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, I need to let people know about this here particular message and why it is so significant for me to understand. Um, I was in the shower this morning in my, what I call my throne room, and um, praise God. And, and as I do, the Lord speaks to me there. When I was thinking about the message and how it may unfold, because he allows me to visualize a lot of things. Now know this, he does that for my purpose only, because when I stand before you, I guarantee you, some of the things that I will talk about what did not come out in that vision. God just does that to reassure me and let me know um, where I am and, and what I, what I uh, understand as far as this message that he's given me to give unto you. But before he gave it to me to give unto you, he gave it to me to give unto me. Amen. And so I was getting ready then, and I, I, I wonder why this here message was so important. And then the Lord let me know. He says, you know, I used this particular section in Daniel, but actually it was the first through the 10th verse, when it was time for me to redeem you back to me. Uh-huh. He did that on, in, De uh, in De oh my God. In December 5th of 1995, uh, I took on a task that was monumental. I had never done anything like that before to that, to that extent. Um, I took on the task of representing a co-worker and we were going to file a sexual harassment case against the district manager that had been sexually harassing her since he hired her in April or May of that year. She went out on maternity leave, came back in October, and when she came back, I had just been elected, the duly elected uh, uh, union steward for my office, and uh, she told me, she says, Arthur, the district manager has been bothering me ever since. Uh, I went out on maternity. He'd been calling her at home at crazy hours of the night. He had been bothered from the day he hired her. But he'd been calling her at home crazy hours of the night and steadily trying to uh, 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 sort of uh, intimidate her by his, of course, that's what sexual harassment does. People in power try to intimidate those um, that are vulnerable. And they, and they know that they have a, a, a hand up. In his particular case, he was a hiring, and he was a hiring official and she was a temporary employee. She had not received permanent status. We were working for the Social Security Administration in Elizabeth, New Jersey. She had to be on the job a year before she became permanent. And that was at the behest of the district manager. Oh, my God. Uh, that's what happens when folks are in power. That's how they oppress those. They have a, a ability where they can, uh, uh, they can uh, uh, show forth what kind of power or, or prestige that they have. And, and it intimidates those that are uh, uh, really in a situation that she was. And I said, well, you know what? 
Oh, her name was Iris. I said, you know what, Iris? We can do something about that. You can go through the union process or you can go through the equal employment opportunity process. The sexual harassment is absolutely uh, a zero tolerance against that, and we can take care of that. So then um, December 5th, she came to me and told me he just tried to fire her, and I found out the particular, I'm not going to go into deep detail about it, but I took on the task, and I, I relinquished my t position as a union uh, a steward because I found out that one of the, uh, the membership uh, they, they, they conspired with this district manager because they had a relationship with him and, 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 they, and they conspired with the firing of this here person. So I relinquished that and just became her representative. About a month or so later, uh, we had gotten her assigned on December 5th, that very same day that we decided to file charges informally, got her reassigned to Newark, New Jersey Social Security Office. Um, Somewhere around the early part of January, I think it's January the 2nd, she was telling me over the phone that she had a, a, a moment where she was emotionally distraught in the women's bathroom. And when she was in there, there was an elder lady that was under a senior program that came in there and to use the bathroom and hurt her, and she started comforting her. Her name was Mother Mary and Kid. Amen. And Mother Kid started talking to her and, and soothing her and calming her down. And she says, you know that young man that comes up here to see you? Uh, that is an angel from God. She was referring me to me as her representative. I would come up there and talk to her about the strategy of what we're going to do about the case. And then she gave her... Uh, um, a, a daily bread uh, caption from December the 10th of 19 of last month, and the, and the caption said, "Dare to be a Daniel." And it was from the sixth chapter of Daniel through the first of the tenth verse. So when she told me about, it, I said, "Well, fax it to me. I want to see what it is. I don't know what it is. I wasn't understanding. So I wasn't a saved at that time. I wasn't reared in church, and I had no church upbringing. I had no Bible teacher or anything like. That. I want to see what it is. So she faxed it to me, and I looked at it, and when I read it. I completely understood what it was saying. And then I said, well, the next time I come up there, I want to see this lady. And when I went, I introduced myself to her. We were talking. She said, son, where do you go to church? I said, I don't. She said, well, why don't you come visit my church? I said, I will. Well, I didn't. And but the very next time I, I came up there, I went directly to her, Mother Kid, and I said, I'm coming this Sunday to your church. That was January 21st, 1996. That's when I got saved. So when I tell you about this here particular story in Daniel, the sixth chapter, you better believe I got a frame of reference for this. And I'm absolutely sure and clear about what God is saying to us. Amen. Because many of us believe that, that we're able to accomplish a lot of things and we can go a lot of places based upon the talent and the gifts that we have. Oh, it's a good thing to be talented and gifted, to be young, gifted, and black. That used to be a saying back in the days when we were going into black pride, black pride back in my day. Amen. But you better understand something about working with God. Your gift and your talent means nothing to him. No, it does not. Why? Because he's the giver of anything that you have. So he ain't impressed about your talents and your gifts. We are on this earth impressed about them things because we are impressionable people. We are impressionable beings. All it takes is a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And some of us will go off running, all going crazy over us. Just, oh my God, we gone. We're already in some place. So here we find Daniel. Let me give you some backdrop here. Here we find the children of Israel, the southern tribe of Judah, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken. Um, God has been speaking to the southern tribe of Judah for over 70 years. One of the prophets that he gave an assignment to to speak to his people was Jeremiah. And he kept telling them that their transgressions had, had, had really got God in such a bad way that he was about ready to reverse from his love to, his, to, to justice on them. Yeah, everybody likes to say God is love. God loves us, but God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. This is true because the word of God is true. But understand this, God is a just God. He is a righteous God. He's a holy God. And what he cannot stand is disobedience.